So we'll focus on this also. It would make a lot more sense for these centers to focus as well on infants and toddlers. And this is not only a critical stage for diagnosis, but it can be the crucial time to prepare the family for all that may lie ahead. Families need to know what treatments are most effective and where they're available and what costs they're going to face and where aid can be found and where they can turn to for the advice and the support of others in their situation. As Todd and I and Heather know, what we have found out is there's no substitute for the, the friendship and, and networking of those who have been where we are now. So the IDEA, it's also intended to serve teens and young adults with special needs. And here too, there is an opportunity to reform and to extend the reach of federal support under IDEA by modernizing a current law, the Vocational Rehabilitation Act, we can better serve students with disabilities in our high schools and our community colleges. And this will require reform by our 50 states as well. Just as the federal government expects proven results in the progress of other students, we must require results as well in the achievements of students with disabilities. And the result we will expect is simple that every special needs student be given a chance to learn the skills to work and to enjoy the freedom to live independently if that is their choice. As families across America know, the care of special needs children requires this long-term planning. Now, it requires also especially financial planning. A common practice among these families is to establish financial trust to start taking care of this aspect. These are known as special needs trusts, covering years of medical and other costs. And for parents, they bring invaluable comfort and security. Understandably, then, many families with special needs children or dependent adults, they're concerned about, in this race, our opponent in this election who, who plans to raise taxes on precisely these kinds of financial arrangements. They fear that Senator Obama's tax increase will have serious and harmful consequences and they're right, because the burden that his plan would impose upon these families is just one more example of how many plans can be disrupted and how many futures can be placed at risk and how many people can suffer when the power to tax is misused. Our opponent has an ideological commitment to higher taxes. And though he seems to make adjustments daily on his tax plan pronouncements, his commitment to increase taxes remains the same. John McCain and I, we have just the opposite commitment. We intend to lower taxes and promote growth and a healthier economy. <laughs> and we'll protect the savings and the earnings of American families and we'll allow more of that investment and the prioritization via our own families to make the difference here. And, um, we need to see more public-private partnerships also in all of this in, in order to find more solutions in dealing with the challenges that this country faces with our children. It's not just challenges, it, it, it's really a joyful challenge is how I tried to explain this yesterday with children with special needs. It is a joyful challenge. We should be honored to, some would call it an obligation, let us feel honored to have this obligation as, as a community. This is, this is this is good. It's positive. This is, this is about special children. We literally call them special children. So, with our public-private partnerships, not long ago I spent some time in Cleveland at a facility called the Michael T. George Center. And it's a beautiful home for adults with Down syndrome and other disabilities. And I met Michael George, too. He's a little five-year-old boy with Down syndrome. And Michael is a healthy, sweet, joy-filled little man. And I saw in him all the things that I wish for my trig in just a few years. Michael's parents, Tony and Chris George, are advocates for children with special needs in their own community. And, and I can see them reaching out to others across this nation with um, the energy and, and the vision that they have for assisting here. They're thinking far ahead. And in their own boy's life and in the lives of others, they're doing what they can to help. They helped get this facility up and running, pr a public-private partnership. They named the center after their son. And this is a welcoming place 
and like so many others like it and so many others that I would like to help see built, see operated. It shows the good heart of America. This family shows their good heart and the place that they have built and places like it, these are places of hope and they are the works of people who believe that every life matters and that everyone has something to contribute and every child should have things to look forward to and achievements to point to with pride and joy. And many of you know better than I do that yeah, it can be a hard path, it, it can be challenging, and yet all the more joyful and productive when the barriers are overcome, when government plays its appropriate role in assisting, not in getting in the way or creating more barriers to you, parents, wanting to seek this assistance and, and the equal opportunity for your children. John McCain and I have a vision of doing just that allowing government to play that appropriate role in providing the tools for our families to be able to grow and to prosper and to thrive for our children to be able to thrive and have opportunity for education and down the road opportunity for good employment and John and I we have a vision of an America in which every child is loved and cherished and that's the spirit that I want to bring to Washington DC I want to put a new face on this issue and I would ask too those advocates who have you've you've worked on this issue a lot longer than I have more than the decade that I have worked on it your heart has been in this also I, I want you to know families caregivers who have that gift of working with special needs uh, students children adults I want them to know and children all across this country that yes John McCain and I do have a message for you for your advocates for you families that I realize that for years you sought to make America a more welcoming place for your sons and daughters. And I pledge to you that if we're elected, you will have a friend and an advocate in the White House. So I thank you, and God bless you, and God bless America. God bless our children. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.